Hello, well today I'd like to talk to you about a very important tool in corporate insolvency, a tool that allows the unsecured trade creditor to elevate themselves out of that position. And the tool, of course, is the retention of title clause, sometimes referred to as the Ramalpa clause. And that's, of course, because of the famous case of aluminium industry Vassen and Ramalpa aluminium, which is 1976 square brackets, one weekly law reports at page 676. Well, why are these clauses, Ramalpa clauses, we'll call them, why are they so important? Well, what they do, of course, is allow a seller who's selling goods to a company the ability to retain title, that's to say ownership, of the goods, even though the buyer has physical possession of those goods and is then able to deal with those goods and use them in the course, perhaps, of manufacture. Why is this important for insolvency? Well, because, of course, what it means is that if that buyer goes into insolvency, the assets that they have, those goods that they had that are owned still by the seller who's retained title, that the those goods, of course, do not form part of the Section 436 estate pursuant to the Insolvency Act of 1986, and instead, of course, are owned by the seller still. So when the liquidator comes to view what assets are owned by the company, pursuant to Section 436, of course, those goods do not form part of the assets of the insolvent company. They are part of the assets of the seller. So it hoiks that value out, of course, or indeed you could argue it was never in, that to state, meaning that it resides and sits with the seller. An incredibly important tool, which is a form of quasi-security. So that's a simple Ramalpa clause, as I've just described it. But in Aluminium Industries and Vassen, this case that we're talking about here, the Ramalpa case, what we see is a, a an extension of the ability of that seller to seek to obtain an interest not only in, of course, the goods in their name that they have title to, but also to the proceeds of sale of any mixed asset that has been created by the buyer and then sold on. And when sold, the funds come back to that buyer company's accounts. And to what extent could we say that the seller can seek to grasp onto those proceeds of sale? Well, in Aluminium Industries and Vassen, at first instance, Mr Justice Makata said that the seller, in this instance, who was owed approximately £35,000, uh, at least in terms of a, a, a set of value that was in an account that the, the buying company had, in total they were owed uh, £122,000, but that, that £35,000 could be a sum according to Makata at first instance, that the seller could fasten onto as representing value that in turn represents the, the original value that was extended to the company in the shape of assets by the seller who, of course, had a uh, title. Well, the company, the liquidator, of course, appeals up to the Court of Appeal, where we have Magor, Roskill and Goff, as they then were. And it's, of course, Roskill who delivers the salient part of the judgment that we will focus on, where it was said that, quote, there was to be implied into the agreement an obligation upon the defendants to account for the proceeds of any such subsales. Applying in that sense, then, Rehallet's estate and a long history of uh, equitable principles that have been deployed in this manner into mixed funds. But what we're thinking about though is, in this instance anyway, specifically Romalpas and the contractual provisions 
that are extant in a sales contract that allow that seller to retain title and therefore protect themselves against insolvency. Well, if you want to look at any secondary sources on Romalpa clauses, of course, you can look at the usual suspects like, for example, Professor Fletcher's fifth edition here, uh, which is in the library. Or you can look at some article comments. There's a very early exposition of Romalpa clauses by uh, someone you know, of course, uh, in 2001. That's perhaps worth a look at, but it's a bit dated now, 16 years old. So uh, have a look at more recent editions of books such as Professor Fletcher's. Another older treatment is that which Professor McCormack did in his monograph on the subject of, of retention of title clauses. So have a look at that as well. And of course the case law, starting with, of course, the judgments that we've briefly discussed in the Court of Appeal today. So from here then, I will bid you goodbye uh, whilst I think more about Romalpas. So until next time, goodbye.